So we are going to look at a new number called E. E is like pi. It's an infinite decimal, but it means 2.718 uh, when we round it off. Like pi, um, like the approximation we use for pi is 3.14. The approximation we use for E is 2.718. It's actually, though, a decimal that goes on forever. And if you check your calculator, you will probably see above a button that says LN, you may see a little E written there. And that is the E that we're talking about here, the 2.718. Now, since E is the number 2.718, remember we said that any exponential function that has a base greater than 1 will have a increasing shape. So I'm going to draw that. I'll use the draw feature. And I'm going to draw my increasing graph. And it looks like this. All right, now remember that all exponentials go through the point 0, 1. And 1 and their base. So the point that is right here is 1. And the base is E, so it's 2.718. So that point is 1, 2.718. All right, there's our graph of E to the X. All right, now, what we're going to do now is we're going to take graphs of these exponentials and we're going to transform them. We're going to shift them right and left and up and down and we're going to reflect them across the axis. And we did that back on test two. We did that to um, polynomials like x squared and x to the third. We did it to functions like the square root of x and the absolute value of x. Now we're going to do it to exponentials. But when we're dealing with exponentials, our um, transformations are a little bit hidden. So before, when we added or subtracted a number out to the side, remember that was a vertical shift, and it still is. So this is, um, the vertical shift is out here, and in this case, it's down 1. Oh, my down doesn't look much like the word down. All right, now, our horizontal shifts when we were dealing with things like x squared ended up in parentheses. But here, the horizontal shift is in the exponent. And remember, when we did horizontal shifts before, they're always the opposite in sign. So our horizontal shift is always hidden in the exponent. So there's the horizontal shift. And since it's a plus 3, we're really going to go left 3 because it's the opposite of the sign. So this is left 3. So if that had been a minus 3, we would have gone right 3. All right. And then a negative out front always meant a flip across the x-axis before, and it still does. So this flips it across x. It's a reflection. And note this is not part of our base. So that's very important to realize that it's not a negative base, it's a negative in front of our base. So this flips it across the x-axis. All right, so let's actually draw this graph using all of these changes. First, though, let's notice that our base is this 2. Okay, not the negative, just the 2 right there. The base is a 2, and recall, if the base was greater than 1, we have an increasing graph. So we have an increasing graph. Looks like this. It always goes through 0, 1. So I'm going to mark that point. And 1 and the base, and our base is 2. So it goes through 1, 2. So this point right here is 1, 2. So as we do all the other things to it, we're going to change these points right here. We're also going to change, possibly, and yes, in this case we are, the horizontal asymptote is right here at the x-axis. So when we shift it up or down, that will change the horizontal asymptote. 
We're going to do that in the last step. Okay, so let's first flip it across the x-axis. If we think of this graph flipping across the x-axis, I'm going to just draw it in another color. All right, it's going to end up as a mirror image going kind of like that when we flip it across the x-axis. Now, this point right here will actually end up being 0, negative 1 when it flips over. And then this point right here will actually end up being 1, negative 2 when it flips over. All right, so our points have moved. This maroon graph is now our graph. Now let's shift it left 3. So if we think of shifting it left 3, we need to shift these points left 3. So let me draw um, my grid again. And, well, it's odd how it changed in mid-stroke like that. Um, let me just change it, the new graph to orange. Okay, so my point right here is at 0, negative 1. If I move it left 3, it's going to end up at negative 3, negative 1, just three places over. So negative 3, negative 1 is where the point will be now. This point, 1, negative 2, if I move it three places to the left, 1, 2, 3, it's going to be at negative 2, negative 2. All right, so negative 2, negative 2 puts it right there. Again, it's not going to cross that horizontal asymptote, so I'm just going to draw that same shape like that. Okay, Doesn't want, we don't want it to cross the x-axis. Now, lastly, we're going to go down 1 which means that horizontal asymptote that was right here is also going to go down one. So I'll draw a new grid. And I'm going to draw a dotted line to represent that the horizontal asymptote also shifted down one. It's not really part of the graph, but we know we're not going to cross this green dotted line. Now, if I shift this point down 1, it'll be at negative 3, negative 2. So, negative 3, negative 2 will be right here. And if I sh shift this down 1, it'll be at negative 2, negative 3. So, negative 2, negative 3. And then let's draw this same shape, but it's approaching this dotted line instead of approaching the x-axis. And there's my final graph.